Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Mystical. Today, I'm bringing you a talents guide for every single build you're going to need for 10.0.5 and beyond. Twos, threes, RBGs, solo shuffle, fist weaving. And if you need any of the builds, they're in the description. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. I'm going to start with the talent build that I get asked about the most, and that is solo shuffle. So this is the talent build that I use in solo shuffle. I will go through and kind of point out anything that seems, you know, different or anything. But on the left-hand side, there really is anything that's different. You're just going for Tiger's Lost and everything. You're going for extra roll. Shorter leg sweep is really nice in solo shuffle because sometimes, you know, the, the faster you get your stun, the more it goes you have. And it's really nice, uh, especially when you have teammates with Stormbolt, which is Warriors. You're going to see a lot of Warriors now in Rogues where you can coordinate uh, leg sweeps like every other stun. It's really nice. Uh, definitely go for more Vivify healing. And then the instant Vivify is really, really nice. I also have a weak aura that I will link in the description that shows the... Um, cooldown of the instant vivify which is I, I love a lot obviously go for dispel shorter in cap kick is really nice even if you're playing against two casters you're still having kick is really good just having the option to kick something is there and soul shuffle i go for the six minute fortifying brew because i feel like most of the time you know even four minute cooldown you're just you're probably only going to use it once in the game right so just go for the stronger version of, of fortifying brew it gives you what 25 percent increased armor and dodge chance which is pretty solid um and then from there you know just ring a piece port port well um tra escape from reality is really really good, really good for the double port if teams try to go you i don't run dampen harm because a lot of the time teams don't actually try to target me they just try to cc me and kill my teammates so i i just uh i, I just opt out of getting uh dampen harm and then over here really like close to heart i feel like a lot of people tend to kite towards the healer in solo shuffle so the increased healing by eight percent is really really good it's even good for you because you get the little eight percent buff uh the close to heart by yourself so you passively just get eight percent more healing you know to yourself which is great um elusive mist really good for damage uh reducing damage taking our channel soothing mist because that's what you're doing most of the time and obviously statue so again left hand side nothing too crazy going on here it's just the standard you know monk uh, monk tree for the Mistweaver side, again, there really isn't anything insane. None of the... I, I don't use a single of of the new talent. I don't use a single one. Uh, definitely start with Envelope Mist, get your Life Cocoon, and then buff your Life Cocoon. In Solo Shuffle and 2's, Comic Coalescence is absolutely better because you already start in High Dampening. So your short Life Cocoon, Burst of Life, that it, the absorption is reduced by 40%. It's just going to be... It's going to feel so bad. It's not even a cooldown. So I definitely go Big Cocoon in, in Solo Shuffle. Uh, so, uh, Song of Chi-Gi, it's clutch. If you want to, like, push Solo Shuffle, I think you need to get kind of good at knowing when to push in and get CC to get songs because it just puts the other healer behind. It either nets a trinket or makes the healer fall behind and they have to use mana to heal. So I think Song of Chi-Gi is really, really good. This is a new change right here. Uh, Zen Pulse with uh, Echoing Reverberation. So Zen Pulse now procs your mastery, which is really good. And then also heals based on how many enemies are near it deals damage to so demo warlocks unholy death knights you know if you're playing against double melee or any team that's going to stack up it's really good also what you could do is with zen pulse it procs not procs it uh activates your mystic touch so there's nothing going on here i'll use my zen pulse boom mystic touch so if you're playing with the warriors you know any melee warriors feral somewhat rep pally is not so much but you know any kind of physical damage uh, melee dealer actually even good versus demo warlocks because a lot of their pets are physical damage so anything like that zen pulse really really good for just activating your mystic touch and yeah no i like I, i'm actually a big fan of it the biggest one i've hit is like 180k it's actually insane uh from there you know i got my yulon i get the enveloping breath i don't go short yulon i kind of like long yulon um i think there's better places to put the point so yeah um and then from here you know you get manatee you get your Resplendent Mist. Again, you're going for Verse Mastery, so it's really, really important. Um, Mending Proliferation makes it so your Velvet Mist heals. It, it has a bonus. It has a healing bonus. I think it's 30% for all Mist Weaver healing. So what this does is it, they, that bonus can jump to another ally, which is really good when you're playing against Cleaves and like spread pressure comps. Focus Thunder, Peaceful Mending is clutch, being able to he, uh, get increased healing from Soothing Mist uh, when you're for Enveloping Mist and Renewing Mist when you have Soothing Mist in someone. Tier of Warning is just good for AoE healing. And then TF Serenity. Again, huge fan of TF Serenity. So what this does is when you use Thunder Focus T, you have it, you can get a uh you get two extra Thunder Focus T's. So I just proc a double vivify. So what that means is I can 
Vivify four times for free. Look at this. No mana. Three. Four. So now I have a four, three stack of Cloud of Focus, and it costs no mana. It's so good. It's so good. So TF Serenity, huge. I, I can also link the Wii Core in the, in the description below. But yeah, these are my solo shuffle talents. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. I use the same exact build that I use in solo shuffle in twos. Nothing changes. This nothing. I have this whole. This thing is named solo shuffle in twos. So if you have any questions about twos, let me know. If you want me to change anything up and try it out, please feel free to let me know. The only flex talent I would say is if you're not playing against like maybe some kind of melee or some kind of pet class, you can drop the echoing reverberation and put it into rapid diffusion. But besides that, that is the only change I would make. I use again the same exact build in solo shuffle in twos. All right, 3v3 arena. This is what I use. There are some different things that I use. Uh, the first thing is I don't really use close to heart. I play a lot of casters and melee cleaves. I just a combination of both. And a lot of the time they aren't stacked to me to get value from this. Sure, I get 4% or 8% increased healing, but I don't. I feel like I'm not the one in trouble most of the time. I feel like I can live uh, kind of well enough. Um, I do so. I do run dampen harm just in case, but I I prefer you know dampen harm over over close to heart. I do run short uh long sorry not short long fortifying brew still just because I don't get swapped to that often, especially if I'm playing with like an Ellie Shaman or an, or a Destro Warlock or something like that. Most teams are going to try to kill them. So that's it for this side. Again, not much changes. Over here, I'm trying to see. I do put it's because the two points are in strength of spirit. I do like expel harm, and since stamping isn't as doesn't start as high in twos and solo shuffle as it does in threes, um, you get more value of expel harm. So I really like expel harm, and so those are the two points I go here. Over here, only thing that changes is I play short cocoon. <laughs> that that is that is the only thing that changes. Going, I don't know why this keeps changing from uh, uh, T of Serenity to the other one. Um, I play T of Serenity in this. Yeah, nothing nothing changes. Um, from twos and threes or twos and solo shuffle to threes except for i do play burst of life so burst of life is really good it allows you to rotate your cooldowns a lot faster another flex thing you can do is if you're not playing against pets or like a melee cleave that's gonna be stacked on your teammates you can drop this and go with a rapid diffusion i just like zen pulse for the mastery heal it's a quick mastery heal it's instant as well so it's, it's really good out of crowd control you can like you can zen pulse i gotta get close you zen pulse into an instant vivify into a Redoing Mist, which is instant. I mean, I'm just trying to find instant healing and then just start normal healing. So, yeah, again, not much changes going from twos to threes, but still, the Burst of Life talent is is actually really solid. Next up, we have RBGs on the left-hand side. The only thing that changes is I do go a little bit heavier. Chi Wave does spin flag, which is really good. And I also do go close to heart because a lot of maps, you know, team fighting, even if you're not team fighting, Close to Heart is really, really good. 8% increased healing taken from all sources is crazy. So Close to Heart is what I go for. It drops some um, some Expel Harm healing. And I do go Dampen Harm because it's a little, there's something a little scary about playing a Mistweaver against like 10 other people. And like there's 7 DPS that could, that could tunnel you to the ground. So Dampen Harm, I would say, is, is, is very mandatory in RBGs. Outside of that, nothing else changes. I think maybe if, if you want to, you could... You could maybe drop like Chi Wave for Disable if you want to slow, which is cool. I don't. I personally do not like Disable much. Uh, I don't even use it in my fist weaving build, so I I uh, just go Chi Wave. So outside of that, yeah, I think you need as many defenses as you can. But this is what I use. No Rising Sun Kick either. You don't really need it. You have other people doing DPS. You could drop if you want damage. You could drop Chi Wave for Rising Sun Kick if you want. You want. It just depends on what damage you want. You know. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much what I use. On the Mistweaver side, what I do is I pretty much drop the Life Cocoon talent and I just go for as much AoE healing as possible. Again, I don't use any of the newer talents, but I do go, I go heavy into Rapid Diffusion, Dancing Mists, and Misty Peak. So these three talents all have a ch all interact with renewing mist and what your goal is to ha is to have as much as many renewing mists on as many people as possible so you can get big vivify healing so misty peaks renewing mist has uh, a 10 percent chance to proc envelop mist which is great dancing mist uh renewing mist has a 10 percent chance to immediately spread to another ally and then rapid diffusion rising sun kick and envelop mist apply renewing mist for six seconds this is why a lot of people run haste is because you get more you get more value out of the ticks from haste i personally like to go mastery but that doesn't really matter. I don't honestly don't think it matters too much. Um, and then, yeah, there really isn't anything else that's crazy. Oh, double resplendent miss because again, I love mastery. Short Yulon is really good. Cloud of Focus, of course, is like your bread and butter heal. 
And yeah, that is pretty much it for RBGs. Again, all you're trying to do is heal as much as you can with your Renewing Mists. Hopefully getting a procs on your Renewing Mist with Enveloping Mist because the more Renewing Mist you have, more of a chance to get Enveloping Mist. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. But this is my RBG build. Finally, we have the Fist Weaving build. So Fist Weaving is a lot, a lot of fun. I've been doing quite a bit of it, mostly in twos. I don't really use it too much in threes. I he have heard it's kind of decent slow shuffle. But this is what I run. Again, you're just going in all in on as many damage talents as you can. So you're going with uh, Ferocity, Ferocity, Ferocity of Shuen, which increases all damage you do by 4%. And then Rising Sun Kick deals 70% increased damage with Fast Feet. Um, close to Heart, very, very important because you are going to be stacked on your allies and your teammates to get the 8% increased healing. Obviously, you don't need the Elusive Mist because you're not casting Soothing Mist. I think save them all is really, really important because people do drop low. You will drop low. You will get swapped to. I do go damp and harm here just because you are going to get swapped to. You know, people are going to see a Mistweaver and just instantly try to kill them, especially when you're pushing in. Uh, outside of that, the talents are the same. You're just not going Vivify talents and you're most and you're going for damage. Over on the right-hand side, there are two different ways you can kind of play it. I, I've been going... I've been tr doing it a different way. I think this build is better because I really like Rising Mist. But I'll talk about that later. So, again, you start standard. You get your Thunder Focus to you. get your Life Cocoon. Then you come down here. Kitchen of the Monastery is going to let you build up Tiger Palm. Um, use Tiger Palm to build up Blackout Kicks. Spirit of the Crane is what gives you mana when you use those extra Blackout Kicks. And then you definitely go... I think Burst of Life is really, really good. Um, if you're using this build in, in twos, though, I would go Big Cocoon in twos. Short Cocoon in threes, similar to the casting build. And then you go Phalene. You know, the Night Fey way where you get the Phalene Stomp, the Ancient Concordance, and the Awakened Phalene. This is what lets you do more damage while you're in your Phalene, your, your, uh, you know, your Phalene Stomp here. This is what allows you to do damage, build up uh, uh, Blackout Kick stacks faster. Get your chi -G, which is obviously really, really, really important to have. And then from there, it's Ancient Teachings, which is the bread and butter of the build, which is this is what allows you to heal um, from doing damage go short gg because short gg is really really important as well having a one minute cooldown that's as strong as gg is really really important and then from here this is where you can kind of mix the build up a little bit there's two different ways you can go you can go for the misty peaks where your renewing mist has a chance to proc um, an envelop mist and then go for rising mist rising mist is really really good this will extend your hot which is your uh, renewing mist envelop mist and essence font um, and it would also heal anybody who has those hots on them. So Rising Mist is really good. Or you could drop these and you can go Secret Infusion and Invoker's Delight. So either way, so what the Secret Infusion does is after you use Thunder Focus T, your next spell gives a 15% of a stat for 10 seconds. So most of the time you're going you're gonna to use Thunder Focus T for Rising Sun Kick. So you're getting extra versatility, which in turn makes you do more damage and healing. And then you go for Invoker's Delight, which makes it so when you use your Celestial, which is your Chi-G, you get 33% haste. So again, you could so this gives you a lot, a lot of globals when you when your chi G is up, but when your chi G is down, it's gonna be, it, it feels a little bit slower. So again, you can go either way. I think that the rising mist build is more consistent healing. Being able to extend your hots and heal people who have those hots on them is really, really good. Um, if you want more of a bursty setup and you want you know more stats, more survivability, I would go in for crystallite. And it, especially if you're putting more emphasis on chi G. Um, but they're both really good builds. Just I would say play around with which both play styles and, and see which one you like more. And that is pretty much it. Those are all the builds that I use for PvP. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. And again, all of these builds are in the description below. I'll also pin it as a comment so you don't you know, lose it. And that's it for me. Hope it was a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later.